Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a brake fluid flush on this 2012 Nissan Frontier. The process that I'm going to be showing you could apply to many different makes and models. Um, of course, if you want to stay within the uh, Nissan family, the Xterra, the Pathfinder, all of those, uh, pretty much you could do the same process on. I'm going to be using a vacuum process. There's the two-person process. I'll explain that a little bit here in the video. There's also a pressure vessel process that you can do. Um, I won't be able to show you that, but I'll show you some pictures on that uh, in the video as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. There are multiple ways to go ahead and flush your brake fluid through the system. One is the two-person approach where somebody is in the driver's seat pushing on the brake pedal. That pressure is built up in the system. And then when you open the bleeder valve at the caliper, that fluid is then pulled through the system or actually pushed through the system. Um, the next approach would be having a pressure vessel on the reservoir and pressurizing it with brake fluid and then opening the bleeder valve and that will push that new fluid through. The one that I'm going to show you is by using an oil extractor, basically a vacuum, and then using a container like this that will set on the reservoir and feed new brake fluid in it. So it's vacuuming out versus pressurizing. So with doing the system, I'm going to show you all that you need to do. So you want to make sure that the valve is closed, which is perpendicular. And screw that on. And then when you turn it up, you'll put it in the reservoir and it won't leak. And then when you're ready, you open the valve. Now in order for me to get my system to work, I had to make some modifications. I have a tube like this here. It's a short tube that will hook up to the end of my oil extractor. And then I had to purchase a silicone hose, a brass quarter inch fitting. I will put those in together like that. And this end will go on the bleeder itself. Before you just go off and replace your brake fluid and spend a lot of time doing it, and check to see how much moisture is inside the brake fluid itself. Since the brake fluid is hygroscopic, it absorbs water. Water in the lines, water in the fluid will start corrosion. Corrosion inside your lines or even in your caliper. So, uh, they do make test strips to go out and do. Um, I probably bought these off Amazon. Anyhow, just open the package. Before you go dip it into fluid, this one has a filter on it. If you want to pull that filter out, just set it aside. Pull it out. And then it comes with a card to show you parts per million. And it says to wait about 90 seconds. All right, it's been about 90 seconds. Take a look at the card and compare the colors, we're probably in the neighborhood of maybe between 30 and 100. However, my truck is over 10 years old. We're just going to go ahead and flush the brake fluid anyhow, but I thought I'd show you what the test would look like in case you take it to the shop and they say, oh man, you have to, you know, it's dirty looking, you have to change it. This is a good way and is a very simple way to check this before you have anybody change it. Now that we've done the test and we've determined that we're going to break fluid, we want to make sure that we purchase the correct oil. So on the top of this cap here, it says only dot three brake fluid. First step that we really want to do is we want to remove the old fluid here. There's no sense of pushing all of this fluid through the lines. So then take the cap off. There's a little filter in here. We're going to take that out, set that aside. Then we're going to hook up the oil extractor and we're going to vacuum out.
Then what we're gonna do is make sure that we add brake fluid to this and fill this up. Then we're gonna add our reservoir. Then we can open the valve a little bit. And it doesn't matter at this point if we're a little bit over the full line. This is the first wheel and furthest away from the master cylinder. So we start here first. First you'll want to take off the little nipple off the bleeder valve. I'm going to place my tube and connector on it just like that. We have a 10 millimeter to undo the bleeder valve. This will be a little bit loud but to the left of me I do have my vacuum ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn that on first and then we're going to open the valve. You'll see maybe some air in the line coming out but that's okay. Uh, just we want to make sure that we continue to have vacuum within the system. And right there, it looks pretty good. It's pretty clear, the fluid that's coming out. So I think this brake line is done. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the two-person system. I have the reservoir closed because if you try this with the reservoir cap off, you'll spray brake fluid all over the engine bay. I have a bottle filled with a little bit of brake fluid. And, the ho and a hose leading down to it. This way you won't pull air back up into the system. And then I have somebody inside the truck right now. They're gonna press on the brake pedal. It's going to pressurize the brakes in which will force fluid into the bottle. So they're gonna go ahead and press on the brake, hold it down. I'm gonna open up the bleeder valve Okay, go ahead and put on the brakes. And as you can see the oil flowing out, there is no air coming out. I'll close the bleeder valve. Okay, go ahead and let off the brakes. And it's as simple as that. We are now over on the driver's side rear I'm now on the front rider's side. Okay, we're done with this side. We'll this is the last wheel. This is the driver's front wheel. To wrap up this video on this Nissan Frontier, do remember you can apply this to other vehicles as well. As long as you don't have to cycle the ABS service, now for as little as $10 to $15, I could have replaced the fluid and the brake lines, but I would have had to use the two-person setup in order to do that. Since I already had a vacuum system, I used that as well. But if you are looking at doing the pressurized version or the vacuum version, do expect to pay anywhere between $35 up to a couple hundred bucks, depending on which system that you are looking to use. Now, one other thing before I sign off, I want to make sure when you do a brake bleeding process, don't have anybody stand in front of or behind the vehicle when you start it up and drive away for the first time. 
So stay safe. Hey, I do appreciate all the support on this channel. Go ahead and give me a like. Better yet, subscribe. Leave questions and comments, and we'll see you in the next video.